Hey guys, welcome back. Dan here from Your Guitar Academy and now we're going to continue our 30 day beginners challenge with the chorus of this song. So a couple of things here, we're going to bring in a different rhythm pattern. We, in fact, we already know this rhythm pattern, but we're changing it up in the song to show you how that can make a massive difference to the sound of the song and also bringing in a brand new chord. So it's finally time for chord number three. You'll be very relieved to know that you're not gonna just play through those two chords for the rest of your life. We're now bringing in chord number three, B7. So pick up the guitar and let's get started. If you're new to this course and you've just come through to this on YouTube, then please remember that you can head on over to the website and you'll find full write-ups for every lesson, all of the tab, all of the chord boxes, the fretboards, everything you need to absolutely smash and master every single lesson. As well as that, please do like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It massively helps us continue to provide you these free courses and leave us a comment. If you've got questions, we will get back to you. So leave us a comment under the video and we'll speak to you there. Okay, so first things first, in the chorus, we bring in a brand new chord and this chord is a B7, okay? of sorts, okay, it's a slightly altered version of a B7. Again, the most important thing to remember at this point is it's just another chord shape, you know, we recognize it if it comes up, but it's just about learning to move those fingers around more and more. In the next unit along, we're gonna start to build in some of those more classic chord shapes that you'll have heard, C, G, D, A, all that kind of stuff. But for now, this is another great chord shape that's used a lot, um, and it's just a slightly, slightly edited version so that it's more manageable uh, for us at this point. So it is a B7, we're gonna call it a B7, okay? And it looks like this. And what I wanna do with this particular chord is learn it from the C major seven, all right? So get your C major seven on. So the one we've been practicing for a good solid 13 odd days now, <laughs> 10 days, let's say. Um, and what we want to do is we want to simply drag those two fingers back one fret each, okay? So we go from third fret and second fret to second fret and first fret. That's how we're gonna do this change, okay? And all you've got to then do is add your little finger to the second fret of the G string, okay? So my other two fingers are in place and I've added that little finger, okay? And it should sound something like that. Um, so I'm picking from the A string at the moment. So A string, D string, G string, and open B string. And that's a legitimate B7 chord. All we're doing is also adding the E either side so that we can easily, you know, we can easily strum away at that. We're not having to worry too much about specific placement of where the plectrum is whilst we're strumming. If you can and if you want to, you can, you can try and avoid that low E string when you strum. Or you can use this finger to actually slightly block it off. So it's literally the nail is touching that, that E string, that low E string, allowing it to be blocked off when I strum. Okay. If you're at a level where you feel like you can kind of let your brain work through that at the same time as doing this chord change, then be my guest, do that. Um, it is better without the low E string, um, although the high E string sounds really nice, I think. It's not a problem adding that in, it's just an altered version of the chord. Again, don't worry about the theory, just, just do it. Um, but that low E string, it does sound better when it's muted, but if it's not, it still sounds really good as the chord, it still works perfectly within the track, okay? So this is the B7 style chord and you'll notice that now we're bringing in that little finger, it's gonna really dig into that because we haven't done any work building up calluses apart from in our five, six, seven, eight exercise. We haven't done that much work with the little finger. So this is gonna be a good step forward there, okay? And quite often with this chord, you'll find that, um, you know, maybe the D string's a little muted just because this finger isn't quite wrapped round enough. Remember that thumb at the back? And the little finger might just literally find it hard to push down you know, for long enough on that string. So there's a couple of things to work through there. So your first job, really, I would say, is get your C major seven on, drop it down 
a string each and add that little finger and just try and get that chord sounding as clear as you can. It's a really nice chord progression. Just run around that as many times as you need. Okay? Okay. Now, keep doing that. Okay? Whilst you're doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out the chord progression for this chorus part. Okay? So, again, keep doing it. Please do. Um, what we'll need, I'm going to write this out. So keep practicing those chords. And you can have a look at this in one second. So E minor will be the first one. Then C maj 7, second one. And then B7. Okay, so, and I'm going to put here times 2. Let's just put our bar markers in here. So we've got bar one. Okay. Right, so just stop what you're doing for a second then with the guitar and let's just have a little look at this. So this is the chord progression for the chorus, okay? So what we're doing is we're starting on the E minor again, but this time we're only doing one bar of the E minor and you will immediately notice the effect of going from doing two bars of the E minor to one bar. Not only will it be physically hard, it's a, quick, it's a quicker change at the end of the day, but also it adds a little sense of urgency to the chorus. So you know, even though we're using the same set of chords, when well, we were obviously adding the B7, but even though we're using fundamentally the same set of chords to start with, E minor and C major 7, by making a subtle adjustment, by simply doing one bar rather than two, you add a, a sense of urgency into that chorus. Okay, it's a big difference suddenly, okay? So we do E minor for one bar, C major 7 for one bar, so those two are slightly quicker changes now, and then we go to our B7, our brand new chord, for two bars. And we repeat that thing twice, and that's your chorus, okay? Um, so now we understand how to read the chord chart. That should hopefully make sense to you. So when I put the drum beat on, it's E minor, two, three, four, C major seven, two, three, four, B seven, two, three, four, one, two, three. Then we come around again, E minor, two, like that. Okay, we go around it in that respect. Um, now in the track, there's two choruses. There's the first chorus, and the second chorus. And in the second chorus, we actually repeat this four times. It's a very common thing in pop music that the, the final chorus is like a double chorus. You know, it just, it just, it's like, oh, we want more, we want more now, let's give it a little bit more. So we add, we just go around it four times instead of twice for a double chorus, okay? So that's your chorus. So let's just put that down for a second and let's get a drum beat on and just try and play through this chorus. So I'll, I'll play through it and then it's for you to kind of practice, okay? So I'm gonna put the drum beat on, um, like this. So remember, I'm working at 65 BPM here. So one bar of E minor, one bar of C major seven, two bars of B seven. One, two, three, four. Ah, I haven't talked about the rhythm pattern yet, which I will do. Let's just get the basic progression in there. Okay. And that again. Okay, and there's our progression. Now then, the last thing we need to mention is the rhythm pattern, okay? So the other thing we're changing in the chorus, as you've just heard, is the rhythm pattern, okay? And we've got this new chord, we've got the changes slightly differently, and the rhythm pattern is the cherry on the cake to really give it something different, okay? And the rhythm pattern is the second pattern that you've been practicing. So you already know this one. It's one and two and three and four. So it's that second pattern. Now, this does bode quite a challenge. Two different rhythm patterns in one song is asking a fair bit, because you've got to really focus on, you know, okay, now I'm hitting the chorus, my other rhythm pattern is like, oh, how does it go again? And you, you, that happens, right? So in this instance, the way I do it, the way I get used to it, is I remember that for the verse, I've got that one, two. One, two. And then everything kind of falls in place from there. One, two, and three, and four. But I remember that it's quite quick, it's boom, boom. Whereas in the chorus, it's boom, two, boom. So you kind of 
you can almost accent the fact that you hold off. So after the first beat, one, two, three, and four. 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 Okay? So it's just a case of practicing using whatever will help you to kind of remember that change. So I look, I'm like, okay, it's a big, just, I have to wait for that three. So I'm just gonna hit it really big on the one. One, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, but when I go back to the verse, I settle it down a bit knowing that I'm going one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and back to that okay so your practice for today before the next lesson and then ongoing after that of course is now add in the chorus so you've got to learn that b7 okay so that's the first thing then you've got to put that new that strumming pattern with the three chord changes using the chord chart so again use the chord chart on the website to make sure you're going through that properly and if you get the time to try and do the two together so try and go from the verse to the chorus, okay? We'll obviously do that together in a lesson as well, but it might be worth just getting ahead of the game there because of course the verse goes into the chorus and then comes out of that, okay? So hopefully we're getting the idea so far and this is the process we need to build any song. We just do it bit by bit, section by section, getting all the elements together, okay? And what we'll do next time is we'll put together the lead part. Okay guys, so thank you so much for watching this video. That's it for today. Please do head on over to the next lesson when you're ready, which you can find here, or you can start from the beginning of the playlist right here on YouTube over here. Also, if you want to leave us a comment, we do our best to answer any questions that you might have and pop us a like and subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Every little helps. Thank you so much, guys. Speak to you later.